embryonic stem cells have this tremendous potential to give rise to theoretically any cell type in our body. These are cells that have this amazing unique property and have the potential to really be transformative in terms of drug discovery and understanding disease progression. I'm Dr. Kathy Neocon and I'm a group leader at the Francis Crick Institute in London. We received the first license that was approved by a national regulator to genetically modify early human embryos to understand fundamental aspects about gene function in a critical window of development within the first seven days before an embryo has implanted in the womb. That's a period of time that encompasses when an egg is fertilized. The egg will divide to make two cells, then four cells, then eight, and eventually about six days or seven days later, the embryo will form a ball of approximately 200 cells. That's technically called a blastocyst. Within the blastocyst, there's a subset of cells, about 20 or so, called epiblast progenitor cells. If we understood the molecular properties of these early embryo cells, it could potentially give us really fundamental insights into early pregnancy failures. We're using methods of genome editing, and specifically the method is called CRISPR-Cas9 to inactivate genes in this early window of development. It's really important for us that we use the most precise and efficient methods available so that we can learn as much as we can from any one embryo that's donated to our research program. We've been able to demonstrate that even if a gene is present at the same time and the same place between two different species, there are actually differences in the way that it works and operates its function. The Blavatnik Awards mean a great deal to me personally. I think it shows the importance of scientific policy and advocacy, ensuring that the public are properly informed even before the research takes place. I think it's imperative that we all collectively conduct this research with ethical rigor that it deserves. Patient donors have been incredibly supportive. The embryos that we used in our studies are donated as surplus to infertility treatment and patients go through tremendous efforts to donate that surplus material to our research and the regulators have been amazing in their support. I think it bodes well for this area of research to kind of develop into the future.